six years ago, British conservationist David Yulden gave up everything he had to pursue his dream. He left his job in London to start a new life in Africa. His job is not for the faint-hearted. David works with captive bred lions as part of a radical conservation program. Ow! Give it up. In Zambia, in the Mozioatunya National Park, David and a team of handlers are working to help save the African lion. <laughs> the studies that have been published so far on lion populations have shown approximately an 80 to 90% population drop just in the last 25 to 30 years. And that is an enormous decline in numbers. Acting as a dominant member of the Pride, David encourages captive bred lions to develop the skills they need to survive so that their cubs can one day be released into the wild. I don't think there's anyone left who would suggest that lions aren't going to head onto the endangered list and be in a critical state in the next 20 years. This morning marks a huge step forward for the programme and for six lions of the Zambian pride. Hello. Today's quite a big day for the lions here at our site in the Mozzietonia National Park. It's a bit sad, but also it's very, very good because they are moving up to the Dambwa Forest site where the encounter area is very, very near completion now. 10 kilometers away in the Dambwa Forest is a 900 acre enclosure where the six lions will continue to develop their hunting technique and learn to work as a pride skills they need to master before they can survive on their own. The move will be an important test for the pride and for their leaders, alpha male Zulu and his sidekick, Toko. Six months ago, they still had a lot to learn. Tokos. Zulu, come on. <laughs> what are you sitting down for? The boys have come a long way from their adolescence. As a young lion, Zulu was scared of almost everything. His Mohican made him look like a warrior when he was anything but. Grass swaying in the breeze was enough to have him just hunker down, close his eyes, just absolutely petrified. And lazy Tocker was more interested in sleeping than stalking. It might actually be easy just to pick him up and carry him. He is unbelievable. But in the intervening months, the boys continue to grow in confidence and in size, and now they stand firm as leaders of the pride. Zulu is uh, miraculous to see such a scared lion progress into this enormous beast who has a great confidence. He's easily the most dominant lion within this group. And then Toka, as his backup, is still the most lazy creature that we've ever had. Now we really get to see this group form together and go through those final stages before they actually get a release, which is, you know, just terribly exciting stuff. Moving the pride is potentially dangerous. Zulu, Toka, and the four females will all have to be darted. There are a number of things that can go wrong when you're darting you do have the risk that the anaesthetic can have a negative effect on the lion, so we need to move quickly. We've got excellent vets here undertaking this process for us, so it should be okay, but you do always have that worry, and unfortunately we have lost a couple of lions in the past during this very process. The whole team is on hand to help. David has called in his most experienced handlers, and he's briefing the project volunteers. Now this is all going to be a bit hectic, 
The principal thing is obviously the welfare of the animals. We need to record the time that they're darted, the time that they are actually declared asleep, any notes on their behavior whilst they're asleep. Zulu, I think, is going to be our problem. Um, he's not overly keen about, you know, being pole darted. We just stay on the beat and uh, everything will be fine. The Pride members are nearly two years old. At this age, they're too big and too dangerous to be handled. It's not safe for anyone to go inside the enclosure while the lions are being darted. Specialist wildlife vet, Dr. Ian Parsons, will take his best shot from behind the fence. There are massive risks and you have to plan well ahead so that everybody knows what to expect and uh, that the animals are prepared themselves. We've separated them into two different pens. They haven't had food, theoretically, for the last two days so that they don't regurgitate and vomit. I just have to make sure that I get the right dose for the right animal because there are three different sized animals. If I, if I shoot adequately and uh, correctly, then it should be just one dart per animal. To minimize the chance of complications, Dr. Parsons will only use a light sedative. The lions will go into a deep sleep, but they won't be fully knocked out. Just you know, Zulu is the most skittish one. He's the most skittish, so we'll do him first. So that would be good to do first. No, Rich, just so that you can pass me the next dart, please. What you call a K, that's T, that's Toka. Is that right? Okay. Let's bring everybody this side, please. Please stand clear. Zulu okay. is first, first to be darted. Then the four females. Okay, let's go around. And finally, Lazy Toka, who doesn't even flinch. So far, so good, yeah. They will start to get sleepy, stagger around, eventually rest with their noses down, hopefully. Then we'll know that they're safe to handle and asleep. The lions could have an adverse reaction to the sedative at any time. These lions have no clue what we're doing to them. All they know is that we're shooting darts at them and they're starting to feel a bit iffy. Um, and she, right now one's being sick. So the fact that she's got it out of the system um, actually is a good thing. The bigger issue is if while they're asleep they start to regurgitate and choke. Yeah, I mean you, you invest so much... Uh, Zulu! Zulu! Suddenly, Zulu starts to pull the darts out of the other lions. Zulu! Leave it! He doesn't understand what's happening to his pride Zulu. mates. And his instincts Zulu. tell him to remove the darts. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Hang on. If Zulu swallows the dart, he could choke and die. You attempt to remove that, there's a barb on it, so don't try Faced with a life and death situation, operations manager Richard Leach decides the team has no choice but to go in with the pride. Remember, they're going to be dizzy and aggressive. All right, so let's just go all going together. The sedatives have already started to take effect. The lions are disorientated and could see the team as a threat. This is in. Inside, the team heads straight for Zulu. Okay, don't panic him. He's carrying the dart in his mouth. Can you see it, John? <coughs> but when the team close in, he drops it. There we go. And they quickly clear the enclosure. Oh. Zulu was picking off the, the darts off the other lions, and we just had a concern that he might have eaten one, but we found the one that he pulled off, so we're okay. Zulu being our most skittish lion is clearly the one finding this a little concerning. As such, there's, there's a lot of adrenaline pumping through him, which is having a, a slowing down the effect of the drug. So we're hoping that we can just help him to calm down so that the drug can take effect properly. Good boy. David shares a close bond with Zulu and his pride. We've had these lions since they were young cubs, and we've invested a huge amount of time in their development and they're now going on to a different part of the programme, so we're not going to be able to interact with them in the same way, which is good for them, but I can only assume it's the same as when my mother sent me off to university. You know, she just had to 
give away uh, a lot of the, the closeness that was there. The females are quick to fall asleep. But Zulu shows no signs of giving in. OK, just roll okay first. One, two, three. When the lions are sedated, their eyes stay open. So they're blindfolded to stop the glare of the sun damaging their sight. What makes it harder is this process is not a fun one. Um, it doesn't look nice for the lions. Um, there are real risks involved. Everyone obviously is on tenter hooks until the whole thing's over. And Zulu is not going to sleep. As Zulu paces anxiously, the first females are loaded. One, two, up, up, up. The team will monitor their vital signs to make sure nothing goes wrong. Hey Richard, what we need here is one person responsible for calling the shots. Okay. These two animals, they're responsible for watching them. If they have any hesitation, they call me. There must be a discussion between two people. Should they, shouldn't they, should they, shouldn't they? One person decides there's a problem, call Ian, OK? The team works quickly. Wait, 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 wait. And eventually, the sedative gets the better of Zulu. It's not a full sleep, so they, they can still react. So occasionally you see the eyes flicker, the head move just slightly. Zulu is the biggest lion. It takes seven men to carry him to the truck. Yeah, they are immobilised, but if they do start getting up, put pressure, all right? Focus on the head, side of the face. Keep the head against the back and hold the lion down. And don't jump out of the vehicle. It's a temporary thing. All right. The team must reach Dambwa before the lions wake up. The race is on. In Zambia, David Yulden and his team are moving Zulu's pride to their new home in the Dambwa forest. The two males and four females have been darted. But after a 10 kilometer journey lasting more than 30 minutes, the sedatives are wearing off. Zulu is starting to lift his head a bit. Just reverse it. OK. Alpha male Zulu is the biggest of all the lions, and he's already starting to come round. Lion handler Kefas Mangela puts pressure on his head to try and keep him calm. The team race against the clock. One by one, the lions start to wake up. No loud noises, please. The lions are nearly two years old. If they were awake, it wouldn't be safe for David and his team to be this close. They're very, very light now indeed. The drugs are wearing off, so we just have to make as little noise as possible to... Otherwise, they might suddenly leap to their feet and charge off with their blindfold off and injure themselves. Hold, hold them down, hold down. Quietly, 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 quietly. True to character, Lazy Toka is the only lion still sound asleep. Zulu is starting to come round, uh, and the others are all coming around pretty quickly now, so we're having to move very quickly. The danger for us, obviously, is they're disorientated, so when they come round, they don't quite know what's going on. Um, luckily, they are still uncoordinated, um, so they're okay, but you know, it's a high risk. Okay, you can start quietly offloading these two. As soon as, as soon as they're off, they can take the blindfold off, no problem. Charge. One person, hold that head. Hold him down. Can you hold him while we take this one off? Zulu is unloaded last. He's almost fully awake. If he gets really cross, don't be a hero and let him go. Okay. So for everyone's safety, David clears the area. Go that way quickly. Only essential team members stay inside the enclosure. Careful. Pull, 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 pull. Go, 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 go. 
Go, go. Go. Go, go. With just seconds to spare, the team make their escape, much to David's relief. Well, Zulu woke up. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of hectic. Your heart is racing like crazy. You're hoping that they're okay. You're hoping you're okay. You just, you just have to go with it and act quickly. The, the animals, maybe, they, they lightened up a little bit too much. The timing was very close. But uh, the guys worked well. I held them down for just that extra few minutes until we offloaded them, and uh, all well. Fantastic. Good, good job. Yeah, I enjoyed it. The Pride has been brought to Dambwa to start the next stage of the release programme. Over the coming weeks, they'll be let out into a 900-acre enclosure where they can learn to work as a pride and hunt at night. Now we just need to leave people to keep observing these, make sure that they're all coming around OK. Um, they've had some antibiotics and a couple of other jabs just to see them fit. And yeah, in the next 10 minutes or so, I guess they'll start to explore their new home. This is pretty cool stuff. While Zulu finds his feet, his pride settles into their new home. But the day isn't over for David or his team. Back in the Moziowatanya National Park, the project volunteers are hard at work preparing for the arrival of seven new lions. After months of planning, it's a day David has been waiting for. We actually decided almost a year ago that we needed to bring some lions into the program, but it isn't just a question of go out and think, well, I'll get a lion today. This has been many, many months of careful negotiation and logistical planning. But they are now finally in the country, and yeah, we're just looking forward to meeting them for the first time and working towards getting them out into their natural environment. The lions are in transit from South Africa. Five of them are young cubs, four females and one male, and it's important their enclosures are ready. This morning, our volunteers have gone into the enclosure, giving it a real good clear out, putting in a lot of behavioral enrichment toys, something to keep these new lions entertained and hopefully they'll settle in quite quickly. All the Zambian lions are raised in prides to help develop their social skills. Yes, Wana. When the new cubs have settled in, David on. plans to move them in with two of the program's older lions. 17-month-old sisters, Temi and Swana. Temi is the one nearest to me, which is extremely pale underneath. Swana, on the other hand, who's just stood up, you can still see that she's got those spots of youth still lining her stomach, which just gives her an overall darker look. The two sisters may look similar, but their characters are very different. Temi is the most dominant sister. She's confident and brave. Swana is more cautious. She can be insecure and often looks to her sister for reassurance. Temi is inquisitive in, in, in a playful sense. She saw just something red, probably a berry, just floating on the water. And because it's something new, she felt she had to go and investigate. It takes a bit more for Tawana to get involved, but it looks as though she's now intrigued as to what Temi might have found. <laughs> that was deeper than you were expecting. <laughs> the new cubs will look up to Temi and Tawana for security and guidance, so it's important the sisters have a strong bond. Within a, a wild pride, how those females are locked together provides security to the pride as a whole. They hunt together and they defend that pride and the, and the pride territory together. Watching the two lions interact gives David a crucial insight into their relationship. It's really interesting to particularly look at the body language. With Swana, we're seeing a, a lot of like jerky movements ahead that are quite lowered, whereas Temi is very much keeping her head high, 
her movements are much bolder, more assured. Temi is more the dominant of these two. And those signs that we're seeing from Swana are signs of submission. But this is all just sparring and, and you know, sorting out the place in the world. As the submissive sister, Swana should know not to try Temi's patience, but she wants to play. <laughs> Temi growls a warning, but Swana's not taking the hint, and it's not long before Temi feels the need to re-establish her dominance. We have just seen Temi give Swana a real proper bite just on the back. That was a clear indication from Temi. I'm boss. I'm showing you. Poor Swana. Lions are social animals and family ties are important. It's not long before the sisters call a truce. Seeking physical contact, they roll on each other and Temi grooms Swana's face, the ultimate sign of acceptance. Come on. Come, Temi. Come, my girl. David is confident the sisters will be ready to guide the new cubs and lead their pride. As these two are getting older, um, they are more independent. They're confident in themselves, but they will always retain a strong kinship. How the whole thing develops when we introduce five younger lions to them to start forming their release pride, I know, we're just going to have to see when they get here. Good girls. And David won't have to wait long. As dawn breaks over the Mozioatunya National Park, the new day signals a new beginning for David Yulden and his team. After months of preparation, a special delivery has arrived at the park. It's just gone 6 a.m. here and Frankly, we're all looking a bit tired because this vehicle only arrived at three in the morning and it contains seven lions. We need to offload them into their enclosure before it heats up because it does look as though today is going to be a scorcher. Zambia is home to 10 captive bred lions raised by human handlers as part of a radical conservation program. Today, seven new lions will join them. On the lorry are two adult females brought to the park to start a breeding program. Also on board are five young cubs, ready to start their journey towards eventual release. Good morning. Hope you're feeling strong. Today is a huge day for the whole team. Operations manager Richard Leach coordinates the project staff and volunteers. We're going to offload them. We're going to have two or three line handlers come and assist us, but it is going to take you guys to help, all right? Uh, the most important thing is to keep it level. If you tend to tilt it, that is when the lion will panic and will start hitting the side of the cage, all right? So it is vitally important that it is kept fl flat no matter what. One, two, three, up. First to be unloaded are five-month-old sisters, Bisa and Bemba. Keep it level. Wow. Yeah. Take that one, you won't be able to get it through the gate, but just bring it right up to the gate. It's just so exciting. A lot of hard work from a lot of people, uh, whether it be Zambian or Lion Encounter, just so much hard work and it's just been absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, eagerly awaiting this moment, eh? So let's move back a little bit, give them some space. One, two. 
Showing no sign of fear, Bisa is the first to come out. Tinto. Bisa has a very curly tail, which is going to be very helpful as she grows older in identifying her. Followed by her more tentative sister, Bemba. Hello. Just to help them settle in uh, and start to feel a bit familiar, I'm just going to spend uh, a couple of minutes in with them now. All the new lions should be used to people. They were owned by a family in South Africa and were raised by human handlers. And <laughs> though, although we've obviously spoken to their previous owners, we couldn't be 100% sure exactly how confident they were with people. Um, but they're already coming up and greeting, and they, they seem nice and confident and calm. So I think we'll leave them to settle in for a bit and see what's in the other crates. Just put them on the side there, guys. Okay. Make sure they're on level ground, hey? Next are three older cubs, 10-month-old okay. sisters Ruma and Rufiji, and their brother, Rwanda. Okay. Keep it level. And those two also need to come just next to these, please. Now, what we've seen from the two young ones is that they're already quite friendly, quite confident. Um, that might not necessarily be a good thing, when it comes to a lion that's the size of the one in here. Uh, because if they're over affectionate, then they could, you know, come rushing up and, you know, all terribly excited and you could get hurt by accident. So well, I'm expecting they're gonna want some love. Talkative, that's for sure. First out is brother Rwanda. Hello. Yeah, go. It's just coming up behind. Next is Sister Rafiji. Come on. Come on. Just take a strip all the way up. up, up. Yeah. Good girl. And lastly, Rumor. Oh, there we go. Good girl. We're over here. They've got a few nicks that they've obviously picked up from the bars inside the cage. You can see on the male's nose is a bit bloody. But that will heal very quickly. Hello. The cubs are unsettled by their new surroundings, so they seek physical reassurance from each other and the handlers. For now, David must leave the cubs in peace, but he'll return later to start bonding with the new arrivals. The last two lions are adult females. Wait, 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 wait. Fingers. Right. Off you go, David. For them, the journey isn't over yet. They're going to live at the project's other site, 10 kilometers away in the Dambwa forest. The two females will play a key role in Zambia's first breeding program. Okay, one, two, three, a bit more. For now, they'll share an enclosure with each other but in time, they'll be introduced to a male, so they can breed. Down, down, down slowly, slowly. Right, release of the adults in Zambia. It's the right side, yeah. Four-year-old Subi is reluctant to come out. I can see a bottom. She's definitely breathing. Come on. Come on. Right at the back. But some gentle persuasion. Come on. Come on. Gives her a nudge in the right direction and she heads straight for the safety of a tree. And Yika quickly follows. And she's gone. Wow. <laughs> wow. They look in good nick. Uh, both really beautiful features. So, yeah, this is a huge move forward for the program. Just so excited to see the lions. They're so happy in the enclosures. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I was uh, just feeling a bit spaced out at the moment. It's been a couple of hard days' work, but this is just priceless. And I don't think many people get this opportunity in their lives, so we're really, really fortunate. We've achieved a lot this morning, um, with most of us only on two hours sleep. Yeah, I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired and I'm hungry, but I'm happy, so <laughs> that's all we need.
six lions of the Zambian pride were moved to Dambwa just three days ago. Their enclosure is surrounded by a huge release site, 900 acres of prime habitat that will eventually be their home. Alpha male Zulu is the pride leader. He's the biggest and strongest of all the lions. Lazy Toka is his sidekick. He spends most of his time sleeping or eating, while the four females form the heart of the pride. David wants to make sure the move hasn't unsettled the pride, so he's going to observe the lion's behavior at feeding time. The process today is really quite simple. Uh, we've already moved the Dambwa 6 into the neighboring enclosure. Um, we've placed the meat here in this enclosure, and then there's a slide gate between the two, and when we're all ready and in position, we'll open that, and they'll come charging across here and start feeding. I'm going to bring a vehicle in, stay on the back of it, obviously, and just be able to uh, observe, because it's only a few days since they were darted, uh, which is quite a stressful thing for the lions, and obviously the move up here. So it just gives a chance to check in and make sure they're all doing OK. The lions in Zulu's pride are nearly two years old. At this age, it's not safe for David to stay on the ground while they're feeding. Toka and the females are first to the carcass, while alpha male Zulu takes his time. The girls arrived first, that's because, you know, they're just generally faster than the boys. Zulu really took his time uh, to wander over, and maybe that's just because he's so confident in his larger size than the rest that he knows full well he's gonna get his food, he doesn't have to, doesn't have to rush for it. In a wild pride, this is exactly what you would see. The group settle down all around, they get their, their spot at the carcass and will just happily feed next to each other. You only really get aggression if it's a smaller carcass. There are always gonna be the occasional squabbles while pulling away one piece. You start to pull on another lion's bit that they've got, then they're gonna defend it. The pride eats peacefully reassuring David that the stress of the move hasn't caused any lasting problems. Now that this pride has been moved to Danwa Forest and we can see they're perfectly healthy, the next stage is to open the gate and let them out into this huge release area that we've created for them. They'll go out at night, which is when the natural time for lions to hunt is. And that is the final part of the process before they're ready for a full release and they have to look after themselves. In Zambia, David Yulden and his team work with captive bred lions. Raised by human handlers as part of a radical conservation program, the lions are encouraged to develop the skills they need to survive so that their cubs can be released into the wild. It's a process that starts early. Ten-month-old Rwanda and his two sisters arrived here yesterday from South Africa. Hey. Today, David is going to start bonding with the cubs so he can work with them safely. Hello. All the, the, the sounds that you can hear is all just a social greeting. Um, they're just excited to see someone. The journey has left the cubs a bit worse for wear. Rwanda has suffered some grazes to his face. All of this is just an unfortunate side effect from the actual move. When they get stressed a bit in the cage, they can thrash around and unfortunately they can get small nicks. Yes. But they will heal. You really are very noisy, aren't you? The, the noise this morning, and particularly given the amount of it, is really all about, you know, love me, love me, love me. Um, 
and that's because they're out of their usual environment. Um, this is, everything is new around here, so they're looking for security and reassurance. And what is nice is that simply just by greeting them back, uh, spending a bit of time with them, you can see they've calmed down really quickly. Rwanda seems confident and relaxed, but his sister Ruma like starts to display some there. unusual behaviour. What are you doing? She tries to suckle on her sister, a sign that she could be feeling insecure. I've never seen a cub simulate suckling. The urge to do it seems to be really, really strong. And actually, she's, if I'm touching her, she's giving me a noise and the ears are going back. She's getting extremely protective over this. Um, so in, in terms of her security being around us, this is really what we're going to have to try and work on. I'm not worried about this at all. She has shown that she's quite affectionate, so she already understands the, the bonds that we need. Um, it's just a question of trying to help her not need to do this. It will take an awful lot of patience. In the enclosure next door, a five-month-old sister's Bemba and Bisa. Bisa is this one here. Uh, she's just slightly bigger um, and has a curly tail. And then you've got Bemba, a little smaller and very spotty. They're all just paws and teeth and claws everywhere. Um, and that's perfectly normal. Um, but it's just constantly trying to reinforce certain boundaries. So if there's a claw comes out, just, you know, smack the claw. This is the only training that we give them, OK? The only thing is the boundary of how they interact with us. Bisa is the feistiest cub. She's determined to test David's patience. Can I have it there? <laughs> what was that for? She doesn't know me well enough, and she's protecting that stick. It's as simple as that. But again, I need her to understand that I'm more dominant than her, and that if I want the stick, then she's going to have to give it up. What I'm looking for is a sign of submission, which is usually given just by blinking like this. This is mine now. Now, one thing is they've now stopped being around me. Part of that is because I've disciplined them both and they're going to have a bit of a sulk. But a really important thing is when I come back tomorrow, they will actually have a greater respect. Um, the discipline actually creates the respect, and that's what we need. I think you might be quite a headstrong little lady that we're going to have to watch for, eh? Quite a little headstrong girl. Cubs aren't the only new arrivals at the park. Two adult females were also brought in, and they'll play a key role in Zambia's first ever breeding program. Hello, girls. They live at the Dambwa Forest site, and David has come to see how they're settling in. Good to properly meet you. This is uh, Nika. Uh, she has a slightly dark nose, and her friend, possibly her friend, growling a bit. I think they're just getting jealous of each other. Uh, this is Subi. Hello. They are being extremely vocal at the moment. All of that is just uh, coming up and saying hi. They are used to some human contact uh, because they have always been in captivity. Um, but <laughs> hello. But yeah, this is, this is a lot of uh, just saying hello. Good girl. Have a sniff. There we go. At the moment, our program in terms of its longer term future here in Zambia needs to import lions because we don't have uh, a breeding program where we're able to produce uh, our own cubs. Um, so these females really are the start of that. Uh, the next part is to find a suitable male um, and obviously looking at the, the genetics to make sure that our breeding group um, is as genetically diverse as possible um, will ensure a strong genetic group. Will you be quiet? Will ensure a strong genetic group um, for future release prides. Hey, 
beautiful. I have to find you a particularly handsome male. Today, two of the new cubs, five-month-old sisters Bemba and Bisa, will leave their enclosure for the first time, under the watchful eye of David and the handlers. OK, kids. This is uh, feeling a little cheeky this morning. So she's definitely on the naughty side. And here comes, here comes little Bemba. Hello. So, kids, how do you feel about going outside? We'll take that as a yes. What we'll do is we'll just head towards the gate, call them. Hopefully, they'll follow. Um, that's about as good as the plan gets, really. Come on. David is still getting to know the cubs, but Bisa seems to Come be on. the boldest sister. True good to girl. character, she leaves the enclosure without question. Bisa's the first one out, which is no surprise to me at all. She's clearly a confident and independent cub. And just watching her now, I mean, she's just having a sniff, just starting to investigate. Hey. Hey, little one. <laughs> Back in the enclosure, Sister Bemba seems a bit confused. Bemba hasn't quite worked out where the gate is. This is exactly what I'd expect. To start with, it's just, it's mayhem. And here comes Bemba. There we are, there's your sister. Right. <laughs> the sisters aren't confident enough to go far. They keep their enclosure in sight and stay close to the handlers for reassurance. But they do start to explore, and it's not long before they catch the scent of one of nature's most unpleasant aromas. Ah, poo, yes. The lion cub's favorite, elephant poo. It smells great, I mean, they just love it. They'll eat it, roll in it. It's like catnip. So you and me might not be, you know, the big wow factor. It's not something you'd like for Christmas. But for them, lion cubs absolutely love it. This is really quite a reaction. It's not normally this strong, but I think this is based on this is the first time ever. Um, and that's the thing here. There's going to be an awful lot of first for them. All right, are you suitably covered yet, kids? Come, come, come. <laughs> The cubs aren't ready to be taken on walks through the bush. Before that can happen, they must learn to recognise David and the handlers as dominant members of the pride. In many ways, I'm like the, you know, the mother, the aunt, uh, the female in the group, let's face it, um, which is about affection and security, uh, that kind of feeling. The lion handlers that we have are the enforcers. And I don't know whether you want to consider that a male in the pride, more dominant. There's less interaction with the cubs, um, so that when they get involved, the cubs are just a little bit intimidated, and that means that we can control them to a point. We can certainly try and stop them just disappearing off into the distance. So at the moment, John is providing a brick wall through which we don't want her to go. We want her to come back here. So now she's back, she gets to play. Hello. So um, she'll be more confident about following. Every day, the sisters' confidence will grow, and soon they'll be ready to experience their first real walk deep into the wilds of Africa. On the banks of the Zambezi River in southern Zambia lies the Mozioatania National Park. Here, David Yulden and his team of handlers encourage captive bred lions to track, stalk, hunt and kill so they can raise their cubs to live in the wilds of Africa.
two days ago, 10-month-old siblings Rwanda, Ruma and Rafiji arrived at the park after a 500-mile journey from South Africa. The smallest of the cubs, Ruma, was unsettled by the move. She felt insecure and would try to suckle on her sister for comfort. She's giving me a noise and the ears are going back. She's getting extremely protective over this. So in, in terms of her security being around us, this is really what we're going to have to try and work on. Miranda, come. Over the past come. two days, David and the handlers have been spending time with the cubs to help them settle in. Come on, Ruma. But they have some more concerns about their behavior. At this age, the cubs should be confident and playful, but they're not. Looking is one thing, moving is something different. Maybe you're just bored of this toy. There's nothing going on. These are not playing in, in the way and to the amount that we expect from, from any of our lions. Uh, whether that lack of play is to do with being uncomfortable in this environment, quite likely, yes. What we need to do is just play with them in this kind of a way, because then they start to feel confident about being around us and interacting with us. Rumor has made some progress. <laughs> Who's a good girl? <laughs> she stopped suckling, but now sister Rafiji is the one giving David cause for concern. She spends most of her time away from the other cubs and has become withdrawn. Rafiji is showing herself to be a real loner at the moment. We're not really seeing her playing, and obviously that's a, an important part of their development. Lions are social animals. Interacting with her siblings is important for Rafiji to learn the skills she needs. Just feed them up over this side. Observing her behavior at feeding time should give David a better understanding of the problem. Come, 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 on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Rafiji picked up her meat and then moved off slightly. Not a long way, but something like that suggests that she quite often might get her meat stolen from her. Rwanda, come on. When Rwanda approaches, Rafiji and her sister go on the defensive. That's it. But as soon as Rwanda came within a couple of meters to get his meat, they started growling. So. I think in the past, Rwanda has been stealing the meat, and as you would expect, the male is the more dominant at uh, feed yeah. times. If Rafiji is scared of losing her food to her brother, the fear could be pushing her further away. I'm a little concerned about Rafiji, so I think we'll spend quite a lot of time with her just trying to socialise her with the group, because it does appear she's just a little bit separate, and obviously a huge part of our programme is to release prides of lions, not individuals. So if she's going to do well in the programme, then we need to make sure that she's got opportunities to, to properly socialise within her peer group. David's team has also been studying the behaviour of five-month-old sisters Bemba and Bisa. They arrived here at the same time as the other cubs, but in sharp contrast, they spend most of their time playing. Their behaviour shows they share a close bond, despite their differences in character. We're about to feed the two bees. Bisa is clearly the more dominant in here, so I would expect that she's going to get her meat first. Bisa is one of the feistiest cubs in the programme. Her curly tail makes her easy to recognise. Her sister Bemba has a spotty coat, and she has a gentle nature. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Bemba is able to step up to the plate and protect herself. One and two. There we go. Don't go for the same piece. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's gentle Bemba that pulls the hardest, and she's determined not to let go. Hey, hey, hey! Well, certainly aggressive. Here we go. Quite often you'd think that the lion that's actually making the most noise is the most dominant lion, but Actually, it, you almost have to look at it in reverse. It's actually the least dominant that have to make all the noise and give all the, what 
appear to be aggressive sounds to try and ward off the others. Just sitting nearby, again, it's Bemba that's just giving the occasional grunt just to say, don't come near, don't come near. Lisa doesn't really need to do that because her expectation being more dominant is that no one will bother to try, so she doesn't need to give out those messages. We have a big fight next door. What I can see is Rwanda has finished his and he's taken rumours from her. We're not going to do anything about that at all. A lion has to know how to defend its meat. Um, I'm afraid she's just going to have to butch up. But what's interesting is Rafiji has scarpered with hers. So, as we suspected, Rwanda is a meat stealer. Getting to know the individual characters of the lions is crucial to allow David and the team to work with them safely. Here in Zambia, there are lions of all ages. 18-month-old sisters Temi and Swana have reached an important stage in their development. In the wild, females of their age would live as part of a pride, but Temi and Swana live alone. To make sure they develop the social skills they need, David wants to introduce them to some of the program's other lions. He had hoped that Temi and Swana would form a pride with the five new cubs, but the plan has changed. Just because of the length of time it took to get the permits to bring new lions in, we've actually ended up with younger lions than we had originally anticipated. And therefore, it's really just not fair on Temi and Swana to make them wait for the new cubs to be old enough that they can get joined together. David's new plan is to introduce Temi and Swana to two females of a similar age. At 20 months old, Rusha and Rundi are just two months older. Introductions between lions always carry risks, so David has planned the timing carefully. It's almost midday, it is roasting out here, and the lions are necessarily quite relaxed and chilled. Temi and Swana, who are the more boisterous and playful, have been out on a walk, so they're gonna be pretty tired. Hopefully, they'll just come together, go, oh, I can't really be bothered, and go to sleep. Temi and Swana return from their walk. To help the introduction go smoothly, the sisters have been living in the enclosure next door to Rusha and Rundi for several weeks. The four lions can see each other through the fence, but no one knows how they'll react when the gate is opened and they come face to face. We've got Temi and Swana here on the right-hand side in the management enclosure, and this is Rusha that's come up. Rundi is too busy with an old bone over there. There's a lot of interest, there's a lot of sniffing. Rundi's now coming over. Temi and Swana are the youngest and the smallest, but the sisters have always been confident. If Rusha and Rundi try to dominate them, they may not submit without a fight. Right, John, do the honours. Be nice. Be nice. Easy. Faced with the threat of two bigger lions, Temi and Swana go on the defensive. Gently, Swana. Gently. It's OK. Sending a clear message, Swana growls a warning to Rusha to stay away. to be honest. Swana is definitely on edge. She just really wants to be nice, but she's very, very nervous. Um, but the T's have stood up for themselves, so the R's are now feeling a bit nervous about the whole thing. When Rusha backs off, Swana changes tack and tries to befriend her. Swana's gonna have another go by the looks of it. This time towards Rusha. Who doesn't look hopefully thrilled? The two T's really just want to smell and investigate um, the R's 
and at the moment they seem to be letting them, although cautiously. What's good is that Richmondy have allowed themselves to be sniffed and, and licked and, and prodded without attacking back. In the wild, when new lions enter a pride, the females will fight to sort out dominance and hierarchy. But once the initial threat is over, they have to learn to work together. It's often just the younger, inexperienced lions like Swana that don't know when to stop. That's Swana wanting to play. And Rundi seems to be OK with that. Until, of course, Swana bites. What we can see is the response is, you know, get off, I don't really like it, but it's not, you know, majorly aggressive. It's our relationship's not at that level yet. <laughs> Rish and Rundi are going to be tested overnight, particularly by the looks of it by Swana, who she's going to keep up and poking and wanting to play. The four females will live together for the rest of their lives, so sooner or later, they'll have to put their differences aside. Deep in the heart of the Dambwa Forest live the oldest lions in Zambia's release program. The pride is made up of two males and four females. Alpha male Zulu is easy to recognize with his distinctive Mohican. He's the biggest lion in the program, but he's not the bravest. The four females have a strong bond, and they form the heart of the pride, while Lazy Toka spends most of his time sleeping. The six lions were moved here three weeks ago, and today, operations manager Richard Leach is working with a team of staff and volunteers to build a resting platform for the pride. The reason why we placed it here, good shade, nice little spot, and you will see all the lions in turn, I promise you, in the next few days you'll see them sleeping up here. Bend it Make them off. And then let's make them off that side. In the intense African heat, lions like to climb off the ground so they can escape the scorching earth. And Richard is confident that the new platform will be popular with Zulu and his pride. I think they'll all have a play on it. I think there will be some certain favourites that will enjoy it more. Definitely the males, Zulu, Toka will really enjoy it. It seems to be the place for the king. Uh, and I'm sure both Zulu and Toka think that they're the king, so... The team is already trying to guess which lion will be first to climb on the platform. Guide, Mono C and Yama, has confidence in the pride's alpha male. I suspect Zulu will be the master of this... I expect him to put this as his territory and he'll be on this on this stand, I'm sure, for some time. Most of the team has their money on the two male lions, Zulu and Toka. But David thinks Leia, the most inquisitive of the females, will be first to claim the prize. The ramp is now finished. Our staff, with the help of the volunteers, uh, have done an amazing job. And it, it just adds something else to this enclosure. But we're just taking bets on who's going to be first. Um, I think Leia, because she's bold, she loves climbing, and she's usually at the front. Lovewell disagrees with me. Toka. <laughs> I think Toka will be the first, because Toka, I like the toy. I think Toka's just going to, true to form, <laughs> go up to it and fall asleep. <laughs> I think it's been said earlier, Zulu is probably going to be the one that uses it most, but because he is the most cautious, he's probably going to be one of the last. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think it's Leia. Come on, cup, cup, cup. Leia at the front. As David predicted, Leia is the first lion to investigate. <laughs> Lovewell, you're losing. You are losing that bet. And sadly for Lovewell, Lazy Toka hasn't even moved. Your lion has not even come through the gate. <laughs> Leia hesitates at the bottom of the ramp, and Zulu sees his chance. But he loses interest, and Leia shows the boys how it's done. 
<laughs> I want my beer first. Look, Leia <laughs> on the platform. Tocker still in the other end. I'm I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really disappointed about Toka. <laughs> yes, he let me down. <laughs> With Zulu, he is really intrigued, but he's kind of prodding it because he's just not sure what it is. And Toka is still in the other enclosure. <laughs> it's really good. I think it's going to do exactly what we want it to do. And Zulu's going for it. The big question, of course, is can it take the weight of four lions at a time? Oh! oh. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> there we are. Zulu is too shit, I'm not sure. They're all just looking really, really healthy and really settled. But, of course, this is still behind a fence. And the next thing is to open the gate so they are not in here, but out there. Um, that is the next big step. Southern Zambia has been hit by a tropical storm. On the edges of the national park, the rain is still falling but the skies here have cleared. The break in the downpour gives David the chance to take five-month-old sisters, Bemba and Bisa, on their first ever bush walk. Hello. Hey, Muddy. Last night, we had an enormous storm that carried on through this morning. Uh, so everything is extremely wet, extremely muddy. Of course, that's great fun for the cubs, and you can see that they've been rolling in the mud. Good girls. Bemba and Bisa are still learning about their environment, and the storm has created their first real test, a giant puddle. Out you go. It's only water. David tries That's to encourage it. the sisters forward, but they're reluctant to move. I hadn't really banked on there being a lake uh, in the way. Go on. Go on. Oh, dear. It's only water, Bemba. On. That's one. Feisty Bisa plucks up right. the courage she needs. Come on. But gentle Bemba takes some persuading. That's it. That's it. Good girl. Right. Let's try and take them on a walk. The cubs have left the safety of their enclosure once before, but they weren't confident enough to venture far. So this time, Come David's on. brought a large team of handlers Bemba. and project volunteers. Come on. The idea today is to see if we can get them uh, to follow a lot further, to really get away from, from the enclosure and out into the bush. The cubs see humans as dominant members of the pride, and their presence should give them the courage they need. The concept of following us, which is certainly something cubs of this age would do within a pride. They would always simply follow the adult members of their pride. So I just want to gauge today, you know, what's their confidence level like? Are they going to follow us at all? And at the moment, we've already gone twice as far as they have previously. And actually, Bemba's at the front. Hey, good girl. And you, well done. What's really surprising here is they're ahead of us the whole time. What I was expecting is that they would be behind or really just out our legs. But they're bold little things and actually we're just trying to keep up. Come, come, come. Bisa, come on. If everyone can move in, we'll chill out under this tree, pretend like we're a pride and uh, see what the cubs do. In the wild, lions must know every inch of their territory. And even at this young age, the cubs' instincts tell them to explore their surroundings and learn what they can. This is exactly the behavior that we really hope to see on this walk. Um, they followed us here. We have gone quite a long way uh, for a young cub. Um, and as we've settled down as a pride, they have started to play just in the surrounding area. They're actually doing it separately uh, for a lot of the time. Just over there, Bemba's actually found a tree with quite a lot of nests in, uh, weaver birds. And they're quite a noisy bird. Whereas 
beast are here. It's doing some sort of hide and seek effect. I can see you. Yeah. She thought she could stalk me, but it's very much like a small child where, you know, if they're even slightly behind something, it's like, you can't see me. I quite clearly can. You know, today has been great. They just seem so ready uh, to start on this journey. Now I've just felt the first spot of rain and a second and a third. It's time to head home very rapidly. Come on, come little ones. Bemba, Bisa, come on. Bisa, come on. Okay, let's pick up the pace, kid. The heavens have opened. It's not too bad at the moment, but uh, we can just see from the sky that a, a real huge storm is heading in. It will just freak them out. We've got a high chance of losing sight of them, and it's just not a risk that I want to take while we're still learning about these cubs. We're back, but of course, the last thing that we have to deal with is the puddle, which is getting bigger. Come on. Oh, a bit tentative. That's it, good girl. Come on, little Ow. one. This is where I fall in. Come on. There we go. Latest right, kids. <sighs> Mud. The sisters are exhausted by their first big adventure. Today has been an important step forward, but it's only the start of their journey. In southern Zambia, British conservationist David Yulden works with 17 captive bred lions as part of a unique conservation program. Two males and four females form the heart of Zambia's first pride. Raised by human handlers, these six lions have been developing the skills they need to survive in the wild under the watchful eye of David. Every day, they get one step closer to release. The Dambwa Forest is home to six lions, led by alpha male Zulu. The pride's enclosure is surrounded by a huge release site, 900 acres of prime habitat where the lions will hone their hunting techniques and learn to work as a team. The process of introducing them to their new territory starts today and will be overseen by David and operations manager, Richard Leach. Hundreds and hundreds of people have worked towards this very moment. I mean, it's amazing. To see all the fences up now and uh, the foresight of everyone and uh, just the thousands of man hours that have been put in uh, by every individual, regardless of their participation, has just been incredible. And everything has a purpose in life, and the purpose for this site was to have lions in it. The lions may be led by Zulu, but the females form the heart of the pride. This morning, three of them will be taken out to explore their new hunting ground. Hey, you. Keela and Kwandi are the most confident females in the program. They're sisters and share a close bond. In sharp contrast, Loma is one of the lowliest lions, and she often finds herself bottom of the pecking order. I really don't know how they're gonna react to this area that we've built for them. But for me, this really can't be any more exciting. All I need now is for the lions to play ball um, and actually want to come out. Okay. Just stay this side of the lions. Everybody ready? Right, let's go. Moment of truth. Come on. Come, 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 come. Come on. Silence. Come on. Come on, gate's open. To David's surprise, Loli Loma is the first to pluck up the courage she needs to leave the enclosure. Hey Loma, come on, come. Hey Loma girl. It's official, Loma is the first lion in the Denver forest. Hey Keela. Sisters Keela and Kwandi aren't far behind. Hello Kwandi. That's it, my girl. Hello. 
Come on, my girl. The three females are almost two years old. At this age, the handlers sometimes walk on the ground with them. But as the lions get older, the risk to the handlers increases. So David needs to introduce the lions to the idea of walking out with a jeep. Off you go. Bye. <laughs> OK, let's get going. Myself and my colleague Richard have done first drive outs with so many different lions. And it's always slightly different because you can't be sure 100% how that lion is going to react to the environment or to the vehicle. Um, so it is all kind of practicing a bit uh, for them and for us. The only thing we have to do now is find them again. Kila, Kwandi, come on. Can you see them, Dave? There's one there. Gently, Kwandi. David has helped come raise on. the three females since they were cubs. Come, 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 slowly. Now, I can tell the difference between these lions, even if I am just getting a glimpse of, of a part of their body above the grass. There's Loma. Loma, for example, actually is significantly paler than either Kido and Kondi, and just at the end of the, her tail, the, the black tuft is much, much longer, much bushier. Come on. Off you go. Try and do a bit of driving, a bit of calling. <laughs> we can try. Come, 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 come. No response at all. Come on, Kwandi. Come, 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 come. David is trying to lead the females to a natural source of water. In the wild, in the come intense on. African heat, finding water and remembering its location can mean the difference between life and death. Ah, uh, they're going the wrong way. They're clearly confused. Come on! Come, 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 come! So the idea here, guys, come is on. to try and teach them that they need to follow the vehicle because I don't think they understand what we're trying to do. Come on! Richard and the handlers are just going to try and swing back behind them, just to uh, push them in this direction. And here they come now. Hey, Loma. Excellent. Good girl. They are now getting the hand. Not only are they starting to go in the direction that we want, but they're actually starting to lead as well. Loma is surprising me. She was the first one out of the enclosure. I thought it would be Kwandi. And I don't know, she's, she's up the front. And she's really the sort of the lowliest, scaredier one out of all of the lions in this group. So. Yeah, she's doing really well. We're starting to see them run around a bit, we're starting to see them play, and that's always a good sign that a lion is uh, feeling fairly comfortable. In the wild, lions spend most of their time resting. In the heat of the day, sisters Keela and Kwandi soon run out of energy. But undeterred, lowly Loma continues the search for water. Hey, Loma. She sees something and she quickly finds what David's been searching for. There's a water hole. Come, oh. come, 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 come. Ow, oh. ow. Oh. Hey, my girl. Have something to drink. We've brought the lions out to one of three water holes that exist within the site. They've had a bit of a drink, and now they're just chilling out under a bush. And at this point, they now have 900 acres. If they decide to get up and go that way or go that way, that's absolutely fine. They can do it. We don't have to worry. They're fenced in. They can't go beyond the boundary. Um, and they can start to just be lions. And I think really the most important thing is, as of now, the Downward Forest is officially lion country. The females are not yet ready to fend for themselves. So for now, the handlers lead them back to their enclosure before the light starts to fade. Come, 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 Over the coming weeks, all of the Pride Come members on. will get the chance to explore their new territory. Come on, my girls. And together, they'll move closer to eventual release. Well done. Come on, Kwandi. <laughs> Ten days ago, 10-month-old Rafiji was brought to the park with her brother Rwanda and sister Ruma. When they first arrived, David noticed the cubs were withdrawn Come on. and showed little interest in playing. 
There's nothing going on. Rafiji was giving David most cause for concern, as she was spending a lot of time alone. Ten days on, and there's a huge difference in their behaviour. The handlers have been working with the cubs, encouraging them to play and develop their social skills. Research student Ray Kokesh has been monitoring the cubs' progress as part of a study for Manchester Metropolitan University. She's noticed the biggest improvement in Rafiji. Rafiji being the less playful and less social, but in the week she's really come out of her shell. I mean, really, really has, and it's been amazing to watch. I mean, she's cha giving these two a run for their money now. She's chasing them around, she's picking up sticks. She gives her a a real good knockabout when she feels like it. It's just, it's brilliant to watch. As the cubs spend more time with the handlers, they start to see them as dominant members of the pride. And when the handlers are around, the cubs' instincts tell them it's safe to relax and play. What's been really interesting, how they react when people are with them, and they are just so much more playful, which reflects natural behaviour of cubs in the wild. When cubs are left alone um, by their mother and by pride members, they know instinctively to keep quiet, keep still, to avoid predation. And it's when the pride members return, that's when they have the confidence to play and the safety of the pride. A lion's place within a pride is determined by dominance. So for these cubs, developing social skills is just as important as learning how to hunt or fight. Establishing a relationship with the handlers is an important first lesson for the cubs. Kefas Mengela has been working with them since they arrived. Most three, they recognize us through our voices. Immediately when you come to the enclosure, when you call them, they know oh, this is one of our pride. The cubs' willingness to play and establish bonds is a sign that their natural instincts are starting to grow and Ray is confident they'll soon be ready to take the next step. Just watching their development from when they arrived and I cannot wait to see when they go out and walk because that's going to be really interesting. They're like three different cubs now, they really are. In Zambia, captive bred lions are being raised by human handlers like David Yulden as part of a unique release program. Every day, the lions are led into the African bush so they can learn the skills they need to survive in the wild. 12 days ago, 18-month-old sisters Temi and Swana reached an important stage in their development. They were introduced to two other females to form a small pride. Be nice. Be nice. But Temi and Swana were wary of their new pride mates and refused to submit without a fight. Swana was determined to push her luck with the biggest female, Rusha. Two weeks later, and the two sides seem to have called a truce. Research technician Jackie Kirk has been monitoring their behaviour. The first week was all a bit tense. Um, the R's pretty much sat to this side of the water pan and the T's on the other and they just basically glared at each other. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of social interactions going on now and a lot of play. Um, it's still a bit tense at times. Um, Who's making the first move? It generally tends to be Swana and Rusha who are more interested in each other. Is Swana still sort of testing? Because when, when we first put them in, she was going up and just kind of ankle tapping, yeah. like testing. Is she still doing that? She is mm -hmm. still um, showing a lot of testing behaviour. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> like <fact>. that. <laughs> Today, David has an opportunity to see how the four females are bonding by watching their behaviour when their relationship is put under pressure. Specialist wildlife vet Dr Ian Parsons has arrived at the park to give vaccinations to the lions. Maintaining their health is a vital part of the programme. Rabies is very prevalent in Zambia. There's always a risk that being carnivores, they could be exposed to rabies at any time. 
basically the pole is attached to the plunger of the syringe. You simply plunge the needle into the, into the animal and the pole act does the rest. It actually injects as a, as a normal syringe would. It's just a matter of doing it from a remote distance so you can, don't have to have your hands anywhere near the animal at the time. Come in with me, Dan. Being injected is stressful for most animals. Watching how Temi and Swana interact with their new pride mates during the procedure will show David how their bond is developing. If you can get them to come to the fence so that they're right on the fence when I jab them, it'd be great. Give it a go. Come, 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 come. Hello. Come on. They're accustomed to getting lots of fuss and attention through the fence like this. So they'd be much more suspicious if we were inside. And the needle going in is a bit like a, a fly bite, so I'm not, I, they possibly don't even know what's happening to them, which is actually ideal. The four females call to each other for reassurance as they gather at the fence. Who is that? Okay, Swana. Okay, great. Good chance to get Temi now. Temi takes her frustration out on Rusha, but it doesn't escalate into a fight. This is Rusha. When it's Rusha's turn, Good girl. Good she seems unfazed. That's it. Done. Good girl. But she instinctively seeks out Temi and Swana and lies close to them. It's Rundi's turn, but she just wants to sit in the shade with the others. Come, Rundi. She says, You're not in the shade. Yeah. There's no way I'm moving out the shade. Yeah, my girlie. For Dr. Parsons to inject her safely, her body yeah. needs to be closer to the fence. Come on. But she refuses to move. Come on. David tries to tempt her away from the other females with some bait. Rundi is sitting in the shade. Um, I'm standing in sunlight, so she's not massively inclined to come into a position that we want her to, because we can't dart her head on. Come. So I'm stealing Richard's hat. See if I can just get her you attention. Can sacrifice the hat, maybe throw it in. <laughs> come on. Compensation there. Hey, Rundi. Hello. Oh. Oh. Yeah, let me try this way. David changes tack. Brundy, come on. Still using the hat as bait, he encourages Temi and Swana to move along the fence. You keep your attention over that side. Brundy moves to join them, and Good Dr. Job. Parsons takes his shot. That's it. Got a new sir? Trying to wash my hands now. <laughs> Don't miss opportunities when you have them. The reaction of the four females during the vaccinations confirms David's belief that they're growing closer. If they are feeling slightly on edge as a result, um, what you would see is that they go to their nearest kin member, which in this case would be their sister, um, for reassurance. But what we're seeing here is that they're actually going to, you know, any and all of the group, which is a good sign that they're feeling secure with each other and therefore this bonding process is working. While Dr. Parsons is visiting the park, he takes the opportunity to check up on 10-month-old Rafiji and her brother and sister. Hello. Come on. Let's come away from the gate. OK, who do you want to start with? Oh, we will stand still. With Rafiji. The curly tail. Dr. Parsons oversaw the cubs' arrival at the park, and today he's giving them a general health check to see how they've progressed. The colour of your gums is great. These are nice, bright, healthy pink colour. Good indicator of uh, how much blood they have circulating in their system. You just want to feel your lymph nodes, that's the main thing. There, there are some lymph nodes around the head in front of the shoulder here, which, uh, if they're enlarged, are an indication of, of some diseases. Nothing there, nothing there. Good girl. They were quite dehydrated when they first arrived, weren't looking in the best of shape, but they have picked up beautifully. <laughs> Since the cubs arrived, David and the handlers have been spending more and more time with them. And they've noticed that one of the females, Rumor, sometimes walks with a limp. Was it a back leg in the, yeah. the back legs? I mean, Rumor at the moment, you can see she's just got a bit of a wobble in the way that she walks. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly better than it was when she first arrived, but you can see yeah, she's, just she's a little bit slightly just sort of sloping. Slopes uh, to the right. Yeah, if, if that was a, a dog, I would say that it looks like it might have slightly dysplastic hips. Do you know if these cubs were raised by their mum or were they hand-raised? These were hand-raised. So inevitably there would have been some nutritional imbalances. It's just impossible to do the, uh, a completely natural job. OK. OK, but that's, that an animal can actually accommodate to a certain extent as it grows and gain a bit of musculature and, 
it may disappear with yeah. time. Dr. Parsons will monitor Rumor's condition over the coming months, okay, but he's hopeful it won't have any lasting effects on her. They look very good. They've settled in beautifully, yeah. Very contented lions. Excellent. Gently, gently. Hey, refugee. After the cubs have been checked over, David leads them on an excursion through the Mozzi Oatania National Park. Refugee. Keep going. Keep going. Since they arrived, the cubs have learned that it's safe for them to play with each other inside their enclosure. Go on, go, go. Now, research student Ray Kokesh wants to see if they have the same level of confidence when they're out in the wild. It's really important to see they're not fearing anything um, and they're still learning there's still so many new smells, still so many species they've got to interact with. And with everybody being here, we're the pride, we're taking them out, we're showing this is what you can hunt, this is what you can play with, this is what you should avoid. And it's so important if they're going to be released, this is what they need to learn now. Come on, come. You're thirsty, kids. On the edges of the Zambezi River, the water cools the cubs down. Rwanda starts to play by practicing his hunting skills on his sister. <laughs> nice and stinky. He tries again, but this time his instincts tell him to hide, to keep the element of surprise. Um. <laughs> this kind of play actually is exactly the same whether they're, they're as young as Bimber and Bisa or whether they're as big as Temi and Swana. It's all the same moves. It's, it's the same sort of bites and holds and stalk and running through water. It's this kind of play that gives you a, a good chance to see how the kind of dominance levels of the group are happening. Now, Rwanda obviously has the benefit of being significantly larger than both the girls because he's male. Uh, so he's always going to have that first place. <laughs> Good boy. Is he picking on you, Rafiji? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure Rafiji's so chuffed with this whole thing. You've got a bit mucky now. It may look rough, but playing together is important for the cubs to develop the skills they'll need in later life. Not only are they practicing hunting techniques, the siblings have started to form a strong bond. One thing that we can see with this group is that they are really close-knit. Um, they spend an awful lot of time just sitting on top of each other, uh, even more so than you might see other kin groups doing. They spend a lot of time just cleaning each other and chatting. They're just so talkative. I mean, there's almost never a point when one of them isn't waffling on about something, much like me. The cubs will be led into the bush every day. Spending time in their natural environment will help them develop the confidence they'd need to survive in the wild. Africa is home to some of the world's most incredible wildlife, but it's a world that's under threat. Even the most iconic predator is at risk. In the wild, numbers of lions are in sharp decline. Come on! In Zambia, British conservationist David Yulden and his team of handlers are trying to find a solution, preparing captive bred lions for life in the wild as part of a radical conservation program. In the heart of the Mozioatania National Park, two of the program's youngest cubs are exploring. Hello, sweet girl. Sisters Bemba and Bisa are now six months old. Feisty Bisa is more confident than her sister, and her curly tail makes her easy to recognize. Hello, Bemba. 
Bemba is more cautious and has a timid nature. The handlers encourage the cubs to explore their natural environment. And today, David is trying to build their confidence around water. This morning, we've brought Bemba and Bisa out to a part of the park they've never been to. Um, but at the moment, they're just being introduced to what we call wallowing pools. Um, neither seem overly keen to get their feet wet, but they do really want the stick. The handlers try to tempt the cubs into the water. As the feistiest cub, Bisa shows some interest, but she hesitates. David tries to encourage her forward, using something he knows Bisa just won't be able to resist. Soggy elephant poo. Every cub's favorite toy. All cubs absolutely adore elephant poo. And it's not particularly aromatic. A word usually used for cooking rather than poo, but we'll, we'll use it here. Um, but yeah, they find it, they roll in it, they chew it, uh, and when it's particularly dry, it makes for a great football. Bisa searches for more. In her excitement, she quickly forgets any fears. See, now you're going deeper. More poo. A couple of days ago, the puddles were a bit too much. Now she's thinking the whole head in. You are going to be a swamp baby, aren't you? That was well earned. <laughs> no surprises, Bisa is the first one to get her feet wet. On dry land, Sister Bemba is more reluctant, but watching her sister having all the fun <laughs> seems to give her the incentive she needs. Bemba's a little cautious. Ooh! You've got your whole nose under, blowing bubbles. But she's got her prize. Elephant poo all round. <laughs> now you're all stinky. Bemba's success gives her a confidence boost. She seems to forget her place in the pecking order and heads towards her sister to start a play fight. Dominance games form a large part of the play. For this pairing, um, one will constantly test the other. Um, usually that's by coming up behind and grabbing their back, biting the back of the neck. What we're also getting is that Visa is just trying to defend her patch of elephant poo. Not you know, particularly strongly, but she's grunting away. Um, the ears go flat back, she snarls, and it's all signed that, you know, this is mine. Of course, Bemba keeps testing. <laughs> Come on, girls. David leads the cubs onto the savanna, where a herd of impala often graze. The cubs have never seen prey before and David wants to see how they'll react. Our scouts called in to see that there are some impala up here. And check Bisa. She's got full into that kind of alert position. The ears are forward. Um, and they're moving forward to see what the commotion is. Basically, the first step in the process of hunting is having an interest and wanting to do something about it. Bisa is now going in the direction of where the, the sound of the impala were. Um, I'm assuming that she, as I did, just saw some movement in the trees. Um, Bemba, on the other hand, has found a nice hole uh, to rest up in. Which is cute, but not particularly helpful in terms of her progress. The impala are long gone, but Bisa quickly finds something else that captures her attention. She's so confident. She's currently about halfway up a big tree. Um, yeah, I mean, she just looks like she's back where she's supposed to be, back in her natural environment, and that's the point of this program.
the release program is based in the Mozi Oatanya National Park. The wildlife reserve is the ideal training ground for David's lions, but it also provides safe refuge for many other species. Sometimes just day to day, I mean, you're just so involved and focused on lions, it is possible to forget just for a moment that you're actually in this beautiful national park. And sometimes all I have to do is actually just look out the window of my house and there's an elephant walking past. But it's a nice opportunity just every so often to leave the office behind and just enjoy the other wildlife species that are all around me. Many of the animals that live here are under threat, none more so than the southern white rhino. Habitat loss and poaching has driven them to the brink of extinction. But thanks to conservation measures, the species is slowly recovering. As part of an introduction program, five rhinos have been brought to Zambia, and they all live here in the national park. Head wildlife ranger, Moses Kawoma, has worked with the rhinos for three years. I have to say, I do feel a bit nervous being this close to something so huge. Sure. Fwanya is the oldest rhino in the park. He weighs over two tons. He may look docile, but if rhinos feel threatened, they may charge. And over short distances, they can reach up to 25 miles an hour. So this one doesn't mind people being around? Yeah, as long as you don't also go very close, because you need always to, to leave uh, yeah. that space so that it doesn't charge. OK. Yeah. Moses, have you any idea how old Fwanya is? Yeah, I'm about uh, 30 years old. 30? 30 years old. That's, and how long is, would you expect him to live for? Yeah, he can live for more than 50 years. 50? That's yeah. amazing, hey? Yeah. Fwanya is a true survivor. Three years ago, he was shot by poachers who tried to kill him for his horn. He survived the attack, but sadly his female mate was killed. He still bears the scar of that day and will walk with a limp for the rest of his life. The guards have taken every precaution to try and prevent another tragedy. There's a microchip in the horn there, okay. which we use to actually track them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These rhinos, there are 24 hours on guard, officers are there. Even while we're standing here, there's some officers already observing us who are actually taking care of these rhinos. You've got a total of five rhinos. How many guys do you have to employ just to look after these five rhinos? 20 officers are assigned to take care of Just for the rhinos? Just for the rhinos. Like all adult male rhinos, Fuanya lives a mostly solitary life. But occasionally, he seeks out the company of the four younger rhinos. The wildlife rangers never leave the rhino's side, ensuring their safety and helping to protect the future of their species. I fully appreciate the amount of protection that is required for this animal here, um, simply because if there wasn't 24-7 armed security, this animal would probably be dead in a very short space of time. It's too valuable poached for its horns. And I have to say, I would hate that the lion, which is the species that I care uh, most about, um, might get to that state that it, the only way to keep it alive in this continent is to have someone next to it um, to make sure it's protected. Um, I'm hoping that our program can help ensure that there are enough lines in Africa that that doesn't become necessary. In southern Zambia lies the Mozi Oatanya National Park, home to David Yulden and to 17 captive bred lions, including six month old sisters, Bemba and Bisa. Feisty Bisa calls all the shots. As the more dominant sister, she's the one in charge. But today, she's in for a shock as David plans to move her and her sister in with three older cubs two females and one male, affectionately known as the three R's. On one side of this dividing fence is Rwanda, Refugee and Ruma, and on the other side is Bemba and Bisa. 
what we want to do here is always to raise prides together. Um, so the ideal is that these two groups are introduced. At 11 months of age, the older cubs are twice as big as Bemba and Bisa. There is a bit of a size difference, um, so our little ones might get a little bullied, but, you know, that's all part of growing up. So, are we ready? Lovewell, if I could please have the keys. Bemba and Bisa have been living next door to the three older cubs, but until now, they've been kept apart by a locked gate. Come on. Come, little one. Come on. That's it. Bisa cautiously starts to explore the new enclosure. Hey, my girl. She totally ignores the three other cubs. This is rumour. But the two older females are intrigued by their new playmate. They circle her slowly, sizing up the competition. <laughs> this is what I mean about how the R's will just sort of bully the B's a little. Bisa is outnumbered. She heads back to her old enclosure for backup, but her sister has other things on her mind. Bemba hasn't noticed the whole thing yet. She's just uh, chewing on an old leg that she's got. Bisa is left to fend for herself. She's half the size of the older cubs, but she's used to being dominant, and she's not ready to give up her status. <laughs> When Bisa realised she was being surrounded, she rolled on her back as a sign of submission. But when the older females continued to close in, she went on the defensive, baring her teeth and snarling a warning. Her defensive behaviour sends a clear message, and the older females eventually leave her alone. The two R girls are just continually testing and Bisa has now had enough and has told them so. You then get a lot of vocalisation between the R's, that sort of, that kind of yelping sound, which is looking for reassurance between each other. So Bisa's done well, given that she's, you know, on her own out here, and she has clearly laid down the law. Um, now, Bemba's a bit confused, so I'm just going to see if I can help her to work out to come out. Hello, my girly. Come on. In the old enclosure, no. Sister Bemba has finally noticed all the activity. Big world out there. There we go. Bemba doesn't have her sister's confidence. She's a timid cub, and David has no way of knowing how she'll cope if the older cubs try to dominate her. When approached, Bisa stands her ground but she doesn't growl or try to fight back, and the older female quickly loses interest. That seemed to be a little easier. She is more submissive, so, I mean, even very subtly, she's giving away those kind of signals to the others. Bemba and Bisa are being tolerated by the older females, but all the noise has attracted the attention of the biggest cub, the male, Rwanda. Right, here comes Rwanda. Stick up for yourselves, girls. Be nice, boy. See, Bemma just wants to play. Wash, you big lug. They may be small, but they have... They have some serious teeth and claws on them. The sisters' ability to defend themselves seems to have earned them some respect. And now Rwanda, who doesn't like anyone coming with any distance to him when he's eating, now has both the little bees, his new harem, um, sitting right next to him. I mean, that's a, that's a privileged position that these two girls are in. I think he likes you girls. The cubs will live together for many years. Over the coming weeks, Bemba and Bisa will have to stand their ground to make sure they find their rightful place within the pride. Yeah. 
the oldest lions in the release program are the Zambian pride. They live in the Dambwa forest. Their enclosure is surrounded by a 900 acre release site where they can learn to work as a team and hone their hunting skills. David and the handlers are starting to introduce the lions to their new territory by taking them out to explore in small groups. Alpha male Zulu is the pride leader. He's the biggest lion in the program. His sidekick, Toka, is the laziest lion in the pride and likes to spend most of his time sleeping. Today, the two males are going to be taken out with Leia, one of the females. At two years old, Leia is inquisitive and bold. She likes her independence, so David wants to lead her out with the two males to see if the three lions can be encouraged to work together. A couple of days ago, we took out Kila, Kwandi and Loma for their first ever walk out into the Danwell Forest. Now today is the turn of our other walking group, or as was, Leia, Toka and Zulu. These three have always been just a melee of lions walking in different directions and at different paces. Leia could well just disappear off into the distance in her usual exuberance, and Zulu might just be scared of trees. I mean, I don't even know if Toka's gonna stand up. I might be surprised, but I don't think so. Hello. <laughs> Oi, dopey. Zulu. Come, 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 come. Oh yeah, just give them some space to come out. The three lions leave the enclosure, but they don't stay together and quickly head off in separate directions. Leia, come on. Good come, 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 come. Come on. Good cubs. Oh, where are you going? Come on. I think we might have to send the team in to try and usher them this direction. Um, can you push them through that, that way and we'll meet you on the road on the other side? Okay. Cool. Drive right forward slowly. Come on. Come, 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 come. on. This way. Come on. I've sent our three handlers back just to move behind them and just try and usher them this way and hopefully we'll meet them out here um, on the road very shortly. Uh, here they come in fact. I can see it looks like Toka. Hello Toka. Come on. Lions are cooperative hunters. To stand the best chance of survival, they have to work as a team. A skill Zulu, Toka and Leia are yet to master. Come, come, come. Come on. Eventually, the handlers manage to encourage the three lions back towards the jeep. And they seem to realize that it's easier to stick together. Come, 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 come. Come, boys. Come on. Hey, Leia. Easy to spot with his distinctive Mohican, Zulu is the alpha male of the group. But today, as the three lions explore their new territory, it's lazy Toka that leads the way. Hey, Toka. Hello, my boy. Come on. Come on. Toka's doing very well. All three of them have now rushed ahead of us, and this is perfect. This is what we want. They're sticking as a group, um, which is what we need them to do, but not what I expected at all. Um, I thought all three would just disappear off in different directions. Toka would barely move. And um, hopefully, I'll get some decent photos to mark the occasion. And the boys, I have to say, just look magnificent out here. Got a lot of mane to grow yet, but uh, they're looking, starting to look really quite regal. Hey, my boy. Hey, Zulu. Good boy. We've already done about five times the distance that we managed with Kila, Kondi, and Loma, and they're just running around and yeah, love loving it. it. And so am I. I mean, I know it's totally anthropomorphic to think that you can see a lion smile, but I genuinely think you can. They've stuck together the whole time. And you can even see if one lags behind, the others have stopped, waited for it to catch up, and then they carry on. 
And I'm just so proud of them that first time out, they are looking so, so good. And now they're just exactly as you would find on the Serengeti or in the Kruger National Park. You drive along and you find a Pride of Lions. That's what we've got. I am a very, very happy man today. I'll be even happier when I can leave them out here, which will be possible, but they've got a little ways to go yet. In a few months' time, Zulu, Toka and Leia will have to hunt with their other pride mates and learn to fend for themselves. Only time will tell if their bond is strong enough for them to succeed. In Africa, David Yulden works with captive bred lions of all ages as part of a unique conservation program. Last year, he helped raise two young cubs, brothers Jabari and Jelani. When the cubs were just five months old, David watched their characters start to develop. Jabari is very much the bolder of the two. He tends to lead, and Jelani is very, very easily frightened and definitely tends to follow. He was there when the cubs first climbed. Ooh, you're right. When they first got their paws wet. <laughs> and when they first set eyes on prey. The hunting instinct is already there. It just needs the opportunity to develop. Today, after seven months apart, David will be reunited with Jabari and Jelani. In Zimbabwe, just over the Zambian border, lies the Zambezi National Park, home to Victoria Falls and to one of the release program's other sites. For the past seven months, the site has been home to Jabari and Jelani. This morning, David Yulden has driven from Zambia to check on their progress. The brothers are now 13 months old. They've tripled in size and their adolescent manes have started to grow. It's been seven months since I spent any large amount of time with them. And at that point, they were nervous and needy and extremely cute, of course, because there were, you know, little fat things running around. The biggest change is with Jelani. The once cautious cub is now just as bold as his brother. Jelani was very, very nervous, wouldn't go anywhere uh, unless Jabari was there. And now um, they've got the confidence to, to play and wander around, and that's what the programme for these guys is at the moment. I think it's really, really good to see with these two is that they're still so engaged by their environment. They've still got so much to learn, and they're just testing out the water, they're testing out the area around them. It's all... You can just see in their eyes that they're just wide-eyed and excited that they're still learning stuff. Good boy. The brothers have continued to develop their skills. In the wild, lions often climb in search of a high vantage point to look for prey. When the brothers were small, they weren't the most natural climbers. Jelani was a cautious cub, but over the months, he's mastered the skill. While brother Jabari can be overconfident. Still not the best climber, but um, I mean, they're just having so much fun. They're doing a whole bunch of things I haven't really seen before. Lions don't usually jump out of trees. <laughs> they have so much energy. For two males, again, that's slightly unusual. Normally you get one that just plonks um, and the other one's got a bit more oomph about them. But to have two males with this amount of energy, I mean, really, they're just the young boys. They're growing up. The testosterone is starting to, to flow. You can see just through the fact that their mane is, uh, is coming out. And they haven't got a care in the world. 
Jabari and Jelani are being cared for by a team of handlers and the project's general manager, Ed Hammond. When we got them here, uh, the first rainstorm, they went up a tree and they spent the whole night in the tree. And the next day we had to lower them down with ropes and cut the tree branches. And that's how skittish they were. And to see them come to, uh, from what they were to what they are now, absolutely fantastic. At the point when you're working with a set of lions and you have to hand them over to another team. Of course you trust that team because you, you know that they've looked after lions before, but it's always, you know, it's always that little kind of awe. Oh. To come here and see that they are looking so good and getting everything that they need, you know, I know that they're being very well looked after and are making great, great progress. In a few months' time, the stakes will be raised when Jabari and Jelani are taken on their first real hunt. In time, the brothers will have to learn that the life of a lion is much more than fun and games. Confident that Jabari and Jelani are in good hands, David continues on his road trip. He drives south through Zimbabwe to his final destination. Antelope Park, the release program's biggest site, where David first worked with captive bred lions. This is the first place where I got involved in the lion program, so in many ways it feels like coming home. I, of course, lived here for a long time. It's always exciting to come back because, you know, I get to catch up with the lions that I haven't seen for a while, and there's some new faces which I get to meet. So, yeah, it's, it is always good to come home. The 3,000 acre wildlife reserve is home to more than 80 captive bred lions and to the human handlers who encourage them to develop their natural instincts. Out in the African bush, the lions learn everything they'd need to survive in the wild. As the sunlight fades, David drives out with a team of handlers and gets the opportunity to catch up with some of the lions he worked with last year. Seven months ago, David witnessed an emotional farewell when brother and sister Sango and Swahili had to be separated because Sango was about to reach sexual maturity. Okay. To stop Swahili pining for her brother, she was moved to the other side of the reserve with two other females. Over time, Swahili started to bond with her new pride mates. Come on. Now, seven months on, the three females are inseparable. They are looking so well. Obviously a bit bigger since I last saw them, but yeah, they look absolutely beautiful. The three lions are now two and a half years old, and they've learnt to work together. They've become excellent hunters. As a group, they have an impressive track record of more than 20 kills. Tonight, David wants to see their teamwork in action, so he's brought them out on a night hunt with lion manager Leanne Marnock. For these lions, in a wild situation, they would now start to take part in the pride's hunts. An important part of lion hunting strategy is where one or two will push game into the path of a waiting lioness, an ambush. And I've been told that these are getting quite good at it. As darkness falls, the females become focused on finding prey. In the wild, lions do most of their hunting after dark. They have excellent night vision, up to six times stronger than humans, and can track in the pitch black. We're just using the spotlight to see if we can see the eyes of any animals around here. All of our spotlights have a, a red filter. Basically, that stops it from blinding the animals. So the red lights for antelope and stuff, they don't basically see it. So um, we won't use white light, because that gives an advantage to the lions. Come on. Swahili and her two pride mates lead the way. And soon find what they're looking for. There's a herd of impala in here. Looks like Sahara 
Lucas just trying to move into position on the right flank. That looks like Soraya moving up in the middle, which means Swahili is further on. Come on, girls. One will go around the back of the prey, set an ambush, and the others will push the animals into it. in front. Yes, come on. Yes, come on, girl. Get that one. Get that one. Come on, come, come on. Come on, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah. This, this, this impala came out of the long grass right in front of them, but just too far in front of them for the lions to get up to speed in order to catch one. Good chase all the same. The females came within metres of a kill. The near miss is frustrating, but their luck is about to change. In Zimbabwe, night has fallen over the Antelope Park Reserve. Three captive bred lions stalk through the darkness. Swahili and her pride mates are on the hunt. Lions have excellent night vision, and in the dead of night, they have a distinct advantage over their prey. David Yulden has already witnessed the three females get within meters of a kill. And the night isn't over yet. These impala here are almost certainly the same ones that the lions chased just a few minutes ago. Now that might work in the lions' favor, because the impala might already be tired, but equally, the lions might be as well. Oh, there. Oh. Yeah, come on, girls. Did they? Oh, they've got one. They've got one. Go, 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 go. Right in front of me now is officially the most successful hunting group that the program has ever produced. And the important thing there is that they went into this hunt exactly how you would want a wild pride to do. One lay in ambush and two push the prey uh, into that waiting ambush. It's an incredible evening to see the vast improvement in hunting technique and bonding between this group is just a really, really special uh, moment to, to be a part of. And I don't even mind the fact that I am utterly freezing right now. My voice is shaking because I'm so cold, but it doesn't matter because these three lions are proving that they are, they're ready and I'm very, very proud of them. With her two pride mates by her side, Swahili has a promising future. And together, the three females have all the skills they need to fend for themselves. More than 80 captive bred lions live here at the reserve. They share 3,000 acres of rich habitat with many other species. The reserve also offers safe refuge for any wild animals found in local towns or villages. Today, David's been called in to help operations manager Nathan Webb release a rock python that was rescued by the Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority. We're just going to take it into the park, it's a natural environment, put it by a dam just release it and see what happens there. Of course, a dam's a good choice because they, they what? It's by water and the snakes don't need to eat very often but they need to drink quite often. So at least it knows where the water is and it can define its territory from there. Yeah. Um, okay. And it'll always know where the water is. Cool. Well, I hate snakes, so I'm not going to pick this thing up. Okay. I'm going to come along and watch if that's all right. <laughs> cool, yeah, just put it in the back. <laughs> okay, no problem. Every so often, uh, an injured animal or an animal that's not in a place that it wants to be 
gets bought here and of course this is a game reserve and has the perfect habitat for this snake to live out a very long and healthy life. Okay, I'm, bra I'm brave enough to hold it. You're not brave enough to hold it. Uh, Are you sure? Uh, <laughs> Heavy, yeah? Okay. Can I give it back to you now? Yeah, he is heavy. Yeah. How much? I'm thinking just over here. We've got yeah. the, the dam just to the left. There's some rocks further up on the right there. You can make a home. We'll take him away a little bit just so everyone's at a, fed, a safe distance. Yeah. Drop him down, jump away, and uh, hopefully he he'll. Uh, and he'll be free. And hopefully he'll, he'll <laughs> carry on into the bushes. This one isn't venomous. It can give you a really nasty bite. There's a lot of bacteria and it has sharp teeth. That's not great, but. They don't spit like some of the other snakes around here. Oh, the, no, I don't want to do this bit. Yeah, see, so he's got it right behind the head, there's bones. Why'd you get bits of Yeah. That is a good sized python. Oh, that's not bad, eh? Why did you buy But, uh, yeah, I mean, check these teeth. Yeah. Okay. The python is more than three meters long. She's feisty. She's a, she's a feisty one. She's striking out and strong. <laughs> Very strong. <laughs> and yeah. what condition? I mean, is this good condition? Yeah, yeah it's in good condition. Yeah. Lots of fat. Very fat healthy. Ribs. Yeah. Now we uh, just move back a bit, point it in the direction we want it to go. Yeah. Put the body down and... Uh, and then stand back, right? Okay. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Come on. Go. Up the back up, back up. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. His tongue's coming out. Yeah? Finding out where I am. Come on. Okay. Yeah, there he goes now. And just disappears, completely disappears. Yeah, that's good. Eh? No, I like snakes. I think they have a bit of a hard rap sometimes, but uh, <laughs> I like it. They're good things. It's just really great. I mean, she just disappeared off into the reeds here and, you know, Maybe we'll encounter her again on a lion walk sometime, although not too closely, I hope. David's team of handlers work with lions of all ages. To make sure they get all the benefits of the pre-release training, most of the lions are born into the programme and start their progress early. The youngest lions here are three cubs. Two are females, Mika and Kali, who are six months old. They were born here as part of the breeding program and they're confident and social. The third cub is a male called Moyo. He wasn't born here and in sharp contrast to the females, he isn't comfortable around humans. Right, here they are. The three cubs are being cared for by lion manager, oh. Leanne Marnock. She's brought David to meet them for the first time. Hello. Come on, babies. Come, Kali. <laughs> now, I raised Kali and Mika. Kali was a bit skittish, um, but she eventually got used to us. Mika, she was always the most inquisitive one. She would always be around to see what's going on. Hey, you. I, I mean, I'd heard that Mika was, you know, quite forthcoming, but it's actually Moyo that's probably sort of the most interesting because from what I hear, he's not settling down with people that well. Mm -mm. No. Don't worry. Hello. Oh, you are nervous, aren't you? Moya's now seven months old, uh, and, and he's been here at Antelope Park for a couple of months. Um, it was actually the wildlife authorities here in Zimbabwe that asked us to take him in, because although he was being well cared for, his owner wasn't going to be able to look after him as he grows older. Now, he's really not keen on human contact at all. And that's okay. Because he's got the two females who are absolutely fine, he will happily follow them. And Nian tells me that he is walking well with the other two. So, you know, he's getting what he needs. I mean, it's very pretty lion. Moyo and the two females live in the nursery camp, but they're ready to move to a bigger enclosure. David's going to lead them on a bush walk to their new home. Come on, Moyo, come. Hello. Come on. Come on. Watching the cubs behave in their natural environment should give David a better understanding of their characters. Hey, Carly. Carly's out first. Uh, this is her at the front. Uh, this is Mika, the second female, and still a little bit nervous about the whole idea. 
Moyo. Good boy. You can go first. He's not used to the idea of going for walks and the whole thing no. clearly freaks him out. Come on, come. Come, my God, come. come on. Away from the enclosure, Moyo starts to relax and play with the females. He's the biggest cub and his dark orange fur makes him easy to recognize. Come on. En route to their new home, the females find their favorite climbing tree, but Moyo stands back and doesn't join in. Carly's actually quite an accomplished climber already. Mika has a go, but she hasn't got the technique quite down yet. But I haven't actually seen Moyo even attempt to climb a tree. Um, quite often at these kind of you know, rest spots, he'll just sit off on his own a little ways and watch. Carly needs to work out how to get down, which is not the easiest of tasks for a lion because their claws point the wrong direction for coming down. So she actually has to retract them completely. So any descent is always a controlled fall, uh, no matter how you, you present it. Whereas on the way up, there we are, the claws can come. What's this? So you can see, the claws are fully utilised in pulling them up. Carly here is obviously going to be a, an arboreal master. Mika, you can see that she really, really wants to, but she just hasn't quite got the coordination for it. Come on. There we are. That's it. Pull it up. If I were to touch her now, she'd actually probably try and swipe me, simply because she would be concerned that I'm going to push her off balance. That's not going to work. Coming down backwards is one technique lions do try occasionally because it means that they can use their claws and just gradually lower themselves down. No, going to give up on that. Let's try the forwards version. She managed to get down to the ground. Okay, it wasn't the prettiest descent, but next time, you know, she might do it a bit better. David has high hopes for Carly and Mika, and he's certain their confidence will have a positive influence on Moyo. I hope that in the not too distant future, he'll actually have the confidence himself to come and get involved. But for now, it, it's really up to him. Provided we keep giving him the opportunities, it'll sink in one day. Come, Mika. Watching Moyo in his natural environment, it's clear he has a long way to go to catch up with the other cubs. Over the coming weeks, David and the handlers will try to build his confidence so that one day he can be a successful member of a pride. <laughs>